Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. I was just making sure it was the 25th. So yes, good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome. So I hope you have your coffee. Good morning, Karen. Uh, this is my winter mug because I think we're going to get some snow today. So yes, so good morning, good morning, and welcome. Good morning, Brenda. So glad to see you all coming in. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Rob and Tanya. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. So good to have you all. Good morning, Donna. Yes, good morning. Good morning. I'm just going to look for a place to put this. Yes. I'm going to just put this down a smidge. Yes. So good morning to everyone who's coming in. Yes. Good morning, Laurel. So glad to see you this morning. And uh, yes, to all those who are coming in, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. And uh, this morning, um, I wanted to share with you, I finally received my Bible in the year. So this is, good morning, Susanna. Um, every year, as you know, I, at least I tell you this every year, uh, I read my Bible through every year. So three chapters a day, five Psalms when you get to the book of Psalms and you can get through the Bible in a year. Every time I do this, I learn something new. And so this year I thought, you know what? I'm going to read it through differently this year. I'm still going to read it through, but I'm going to read it through <laughs> with Nikki Gumbel. So Nikki Gumbel, Nikki and Pippa are uh, the creators of the Alpha program. And he, I believe he's close to retiring, if not has retired from Holy Trinity Brompton in, um, in the UK. Anyways, so <laughs> I have been following along on the Bible app and uh, because my first one got lost in the mail. It literally, the, the cardboard came and there was no book in it. And I was like, nuts. So I called Canada Post. Canada Post said, do you have tracking on it? I'm like, no, it's a book. Anyways, so I don't think I said it quite like that. But in my heart, I probably did. <laughs> so they said, well, call the person that you bought it from and uh, see what they can do. And that's all we can do. So I said, okay. So I, I messaged the book depository because that's where I bought it from. And uh, they said, oh, we're so sorry. Would you like a refund or would you like us to send you a new one? I said, send me a new one. Yes, send me a new one. So it came yesterday and I'm so excited. And uh, because, because you might be thinking, but Jen, it's free on the Bible app. Free means zero dollars. I like that. I like saving money. I can be quite frugal sometimes. Um, but I wanted to eliminate how much time I was spending to get rid of some, how much time I was spending on my phone. And so I said, okay, <laughs> I'll get, I'll get a paper copy of this uh, because especially first thing in the morning, I want to be very conscious of what I'm putting into my, my mind. And so I actually, I used to have my phone beside my bed, which I know is a no, no, but it's also my alarm clock. Um, so I, I moved my phone outside of my room so like I can still hear it when it goes off. And because I don't want to keep hitting the snooze button or I don't want to pick it up and read it. And so when I put it outside of my room in a very awkward, uncomfortable place to be in, uh, like standing outside a door because that's where the plug in is, um, then I eliminate a bunch of time that I would spend on my phone, especially first thing in the morning, which is really, really important to me uh, because I don't want uh, my first part of the morning to be... Um, filled with what the world says is happening. I want first part of my morning to be filled with what God says is happening. So that's why it's important to first thing. So re get up, get in my chair, pray, read my Bible. So <clears throat> it's a little plug for making sure you are allocating your first part of your day to the Lord. So I, um, I'm reading through <laughs> uh, what uh, Nikki Gumbel has written because he has little commentaries along the way. And as I opened up to today, it says God intended for good. And um, 
and he's, he's in the midst of talking about suffering. And it says, it starts off like this. In 1947, a young New Yorker named Glenn Chambers had a lifelong dream to work for God in Ecuador. At the airport on the day of departure, he wanted to send a note to his mother, but he didn't have time to buy a card. He noticed a piece of paper on the terminal floor and picked it up. It turned out to be an advertisement with why spread across it. He scribbled his note around the word why and put it in the post box. Very interesting. Have a good day, Louise. Uh, that night, his airplane exploded as it hit a 14,000 foot Columbian peak. When his mother received the note after the news of his death, the question burned up. Uh, at her on the page. Why? Why does God allow such suffering? Right? We have all asked this question. This question is the single greatest challenge to the Christian faith. The amount of suffering and its distribution seems to be random and unfair. It outrages and bewilders us. Theologians and philosophers have wrestled with, for centuries with the mystery of under, undeserved suffering, and no one has ever come up with a simple and complete solution. Today and tomorrow's passages, so what I'm reading tomorrow, will, will, are only part of the answer, but each of them gives us some insight. We see that although suffering is never good in itself, God is able to see it for good in a number of ways, is able to use it for good in a number of ways. God loves you. Your suffering is also God's suffering. He suffers alongside you. We see this when Jesus weeps uh, with Mary and Martha at the loss of their brother. Uh, yet he does not always simply remove the suffering from your life. He sometimes uses the bad things that happen to bring about his good purposes. So reading from Psalm 15, uh, let me read it to you. So Lord, we ask that you'd bless this reading to your purposes and to our, to our spirits. Amen. Okay, so this is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your secret tent, who may live on your holy mountain, the one whose way of life is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to the neighbor and casts no slur, slur on others, who despises a vile person, who, de who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. And so God uses suffering to transform you. Have there been times in your life because of circumstances you have felt shaken? Times when you have lost your bearings and have felt tempted to give up. Today's psalm reminds us that you need never be shaken, even in times of suffering. David describes the kind of life that God intends you to lead. The guidelines he gives are things you can hold on to difficult times. Isn't that interesting? That in the midst of the suffering, whatever suffering you might be experiencing, whether it is financial suffering, relational suffering, spiritual suffering, physical suffering, mental suffering, whatever the suffering it is that we are experiencing, and for however long it endures, whether it's short or a lifetime, there's a way, a character that God wants us to have during the midst of our suffering. It's not like we get to just throw out kindness, we throw out goodness, we throw uh, self-control, we throw out forgiveness. No, God actually still in the midst of our suffering is producing character in us. And so these are some of the things from uh, Psalm 15 that we can apply to our own lives in the midst of our suffering. One is we act right. Seek to walk blamelessly and do what is right. That is verse two. So even in the midst of our suffering, whatever it is, we seek to do right. We seek to do the right thing. Even though we might not be treated fairly, 
we always seek to do the right thing. Secondly, we tell the truth. Verse two again says, speak the truth from your heart. So even in the midst of suffering, even if it could get us out of some suffering, if we told a, a lie, even in the midst of our suffering, we speak truth. So we are to do what is right and we're to speak truth even in the midst of our suffering. Third thing is do not gossip. It says, do not let slander come from your tongue. Verse three. So if our suffering is being caused by other people, a husband, a wife, a child, a co-worker, a fellow church person, an in-law, we are not to speak unkindly to them. We are not to slander. Or to, we're not supposed to speak unkindly to them, but we're not supposed to speak slanderous words against them. I know who needs this much conviction at seven o'clock in the morning. So we are to act right. We are to tell the truth. We are not to gossip about other people in the midst of our, in the midst of our suffering, even though they might be the one causing it. No, uh, we are not to hurt our neighbor. Do your neighbor no wrong says verse three. I know it's just keep your word. Keep your promises even when it hurts. This means doing whatever you have committed to even when it does not suit you. <laughs> right? If you have said something, if you have said you're going to do it, keep your word. If you're like, I can't possibly do it. <sighs> Ask the Lord about it. The book of James says, let your yes be yes and your no be no period. If you've committed to something, you might need to say, Lord, I've committed to this. Now, the thing that you need to ask yourself is, did you commit to it with the Lord's like check mark? Like, did you say yes to something because you asked the Lord and he's like, yep, go do it. Or did you just do something on your own? Either way, you need to let your yes be yes and your no be no. And uh, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, which means I can, with the Lord's help, fulfill my commitments. That's a tough one, right? Because you're like, well, what? What if I don't have the money to? What if I'm not feeling up to it? What, right? And we start, this is why it's so important to go back to the Lord and say, God, I'm just, I'm not sure about this. If God says, but I asked you to do it, then you need to trust that he's going to help you fulfill it. Even if you're thinking, yeah, but that's going to cost me this much money and I only have like two cents. I guess it would be a nickel, <laughs> right? If you're Canadian. Uh, and as Susanna said, it's a tall order, but God is taller. Like, please hear what I'm saying today. We need to be trusting God in the midst of our suffering to help us be the people he wants us to be. Trust God in this. Okay, so keep your word. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Okay, number six is be generous. If you lend money, don't charge excessive interest. And you think, well, maybe, but I could probably make some money and help me in the midst of that. Nope, do not charge excessive interest. That is verse five. It says, but lends money to the poor without interest. So even in the midst of our suffering, even when you might not have a lot of money because maybe the suffering is a financial thing, you need to trust God. And you might be thinking, I can't tithe right now because money is so tight. It says out of our first fruits that we're to give to the Lord, right? So we need if, if you're struggling financially and you're like, but can you trust God with your tithe and let him work it out? I know some of you are just tuning out because you're like, this is too much conviction. <clears throat> and the last one is be honest, never take bribes. It says, as our character begins to transform in these ways, difficult situations and suffering have less of a destabilizing impact on us. As David notes, those who do these things will never be shaken and you will dwell in the sanctuary of the Lord. When we act blamelessly do the right thing when we tell the truth when we don't gossip when we don't hurt our neighbor when we keep our word when we're generous and when we're honest we will never be shaken because we're exactly 
where God wants us to be, doing what God wants us to do, even in the midst of our suffering. We're told that Job, this this guy in the Bible who had tremendous physical, mental, relational, financial suffering, says he did not sin. And we continue to go back and read all about Job, right? So that we can be encouraged in the midst of our suffering. So our lives can be a witness to other people when we put these principles into effect, even in the midst of our suffering. And that's what God is asking us to do. Because then it says, those whoever do th- does these things will never be shaken. <sighs> it's tough. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy. Because sometimes it's just easier to do the not right thing. But we know that when we choose to put God first in our suffering, no matter what kind of suffering it is, when we choose to continue to do the things that he's asked us to do, as, as Nikki Gumbel was saying, he says, our character is transformed, difficult circumstances and suffering have less of a disabling impact on us. We start to see our situation different because God becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Suffering is probably still there, but the presence and power of God has become so big in our lives that we're able to endure with his help. So let me let me end with this prayer that Nikki says. It says, Lord, thank you that ex- you accept me as I am, even when I don't get things right. But you do not want me to remain that way. Help me to live a holy life. Help me to see the trials and difficulties I face as part of my character formation. Lord God, I agree with Nikki's prayer. You accept us as we are. You welcome us. But Lord, you love us so much you don't want to leave us that way. Because probably some parts of our character hurt ourselves and hurts others. And so Lord, in the midst of whatever we're suffering from today, whatever we're struggling with, whatever trial, whatever temptation, would you help us to live Help us to do the right thing. Help us not to speak unkindly about others. Help us to continue to be generous. Help us to say yes and mean it and follow it through. Help us to remember that you are our help. And when we put your truths into practice, you will never be shaken. Help us to hold on to this today. We thank you, Lord, in advance for how you're going to become bigger and bigger and bigger in our lives. Help us today to be light and life and joy and truth to whomever we meet. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, my dear friends. Feel free to join me as I read through Bible in the Year with Nikki Gumbel. You can get on the Bible app. You do not have to buy the book. Um, But I want to encourage you today. Trust God in whatever your situation is that you're you're fighting with, walking through, thinking about. Know that the Lord is near. Know that the Lord loves you and he wants to help you. And he will give you everything that you need to be his person today. All right. So with this in mind, remember to like, share, go outside and help your community experience Christ. Who knows? Maybe the way that you respond to something in your life today will be an impact on somebody else. That's your testimony. Bye.